Okay, there's not really a next step. Um, there's several things that can be done in, in, in any order, but some things have to be done in a specific order. So right now I'm just going to do a few things that can be done. One of this, one of which is securing the servo horns. And so I popped in the the small servo horn into the side there, and I'm using these little the smallest self-threading screws to secure that. And this can be a little bit tricky because you can't get a straight shot at the screw holes here, but it's good enough. And so just put it in, and again, you don't want to strip out the self-threading screws. You don't want to strip the plastic by tightening it too, many, too much. And let's take a look at the other end. Okay, so we just have the little points of the screws sticking through. And see, this is a nice fit right there. You don't have to modify the white servo horn. Just the right size. This is great. Okay, and let's attach this other servo horn down here. Now this servo horn is not completely symmetrical here. There are the the four holes are not spaced exactly the same, so there's a right way and a wrong way to put this in. So you want to make sure that the holes that are far apart match the holes far apart in here. Well you kind of there, that's better. All four holes lined up. Okay, and these you use the long, well, the medium size self threading screws here, and these go in through the bottom side. And generally, on things like this, it's a good idea not to tighten it until you have all the screws in place. Okay, once you have all the screws in, tighten them down. But again, be careful not to strip the plastic. Okay. And these protrude a bit further inside. And we can install, I think, the one of the last things to do before we get to the final step is to secure this servo in place. Now this servo needs to engage with this servo horn here. So kind of think of it as you're putting this together. So that engages with that servo horn. So then the other hinge position is on this side over here. So that means the servo needs to face in the direction of this of over here. So I think if we do it like this, that will line up correctly with the hinge and with the horn. So that's the, the position we want this servo secured. And we're going to use the medium machine screws and the nuts to go with it. And I'm going to start on the rear one just because I know that's an easier one to do from my experience with the other um, pan tilt mechanism. Back that out because that's not going in very well. And I'm going to see if I can get that started better with just the screw by itself. Okay, now the threads are engaged and it's threading through the plastic. But we don't want threads in that plastic. We want that this part of the plastic stripped out. So we want it to engage in the, the nuts, not in the plastic. But I can't twist it well enough without fear of breaking the plastic, so I'm just going to back out and now secure it with the servo in place. Okay, now I'm going to go and enter the, the start the back again. Sometimes it's easier to get the nuts started when there's just a little bit of thread showing. So I'm going to try that. And I'm going to use some tweezers to help hold it in place. Trying to get those threads to engage. I don't know if there's enough of the 
machine screw poking through to engage. There's not. But since I didn't manage to strip the threads, um, that's actually secured into the plastic. It's not a self-threading screw, but it did self-thread and in, in hold itself in place. So, on this one, I'm not going to add a nut. There's not room. The, there's the, it's just, uh, the, this isn't long enough. The machine screw isn't long enough. So, I'm going to go into the back side now, or whatever side this is, and put that screw in place. And again, there's not enough screw for a nut there. I'm, yeah, not enough thread to secure a nut. So, I was wrong about needing nuts on that part. I guess these nuts can go with the long machine screws if you want to secure the base to something. Okay. Now we're at the point of final assembly. And this is when we need to use a servo tester or a, a RC gear to center the servos. So I'm going to use a servo tester. And I'm going to plug in the servos first. I'm going to do both servos in the same tester here. And it's marked on here signal plus minus. So the orange wire is signal, red is positive, brown is negative. Oftentimes it will be white, red, and black. Black would be negative and white would be the signal. Hopefully red is always the positive and the positive is in the center. Okay, and I'm going to turn on the voltage regulator. And the servo tester has three modes. One where you can control it manually, and then the second mode is a center mode. And that's what we want it on right now. We want it centered. Okay, and we're going to try to get this top piece, these two top pieces together. And we have the hinge piece here. See there's a hole in this part, and there's a uh, the part that protrudes right there. But we also need the servo horn to engage. Okay? And I, I want to start out with this front part perpendicular to the back part. So I'm going to first try to get that servo horn popped in while it is... No, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to try to get this part popped in first. We'll see which way works first. You have to kind of bend this plastic piece out to snap that in place. That's in there. And then we want to get the servo horn popped in place, but we want it popped in place when it's in the right position. Okay. Well, oh, that's not quite we can try. You, you might not all. You might not be able to get it in the, exactly. So you'll have to decide. Do you want it pointing a little bit up? Do you want to point it a little bit down? I think I'll go with a little bit up myself, and have it positioned like that. You'll have to decide because you can't get it exactly how you want because of the shape of the um, last of the spline on the servo there. Okay, so that's in place, and let's get a servo horn screw and put that in place. Now these have not been used before so we need to thread it in the first time. It's a self-threading screw so we'll tighten it down. Oh, let me push it in all the way. Tighten it into place without stripping. Okay. And now the bottom piece. Now on the bottom piece we want the extra part extending in the back, I believe. That's the way, at least that's all the pictures I've seen show it. I guess you could have it either way. You could have it in any orientation you want. And again, these don't quite line up exactly. So I'll try to pick which way I want it to point, which way is closest. You know, you might be able to flip these around. I'm going to do that. I'm going to flip this around 180 degrees. Let's see if it will work if I get flipped it around 180 degrees. 
uh, not a whole lot better. So I won't bother. I won't bother doing that then. On some servos, you can flip the servo horn around 180 degrees, and you'll get a better alignment. But it doesn't look like that's the case here. And we'll use the other self-threading screw. on. That noise is as the servo fights against the turning by turning the servo. Okay. And the <coughs> servo tester is still in center position. And now we will go to oscillate by pushing the little mode button. And so now it's oscillating. I'll hold it in place as it oscillates. Okay, it looks pretty good. I think it works. And I will put the servo tester into manual mode and just turn it with my hand. And I think that's it. Thank you very much.